Hey, I'm Ben Milne. I'm here to rant about payments. When I say banks, I uh, mean ACH. And when I say interchange, I mean credit cards. I have Twitter. Most of my slides are typically less than 15 seconds, so we might have a few slow things in here. So bear with me. I'm also going to try not to swear for the next five minutes, which might be a little bit of a miracle if I don't. So as money moves through the US economy, when it moves through cards, when you spend $100, the person on the other side of the transaction gets $96.70. How many people have heard of something called interchange before? Awesome. So basically, as money moves through the US economy, because of the way we spend it, it becomes less valuable. Interchange is not the only reason for this. People want to hold your money as you spend it. They want to get money. They want to make investments with your money. There's a lot of issues, and there's a lot of hands in the pile in between every transaction that, honestly, most people don't know about. There's entire uh, businesses and markets built around the risks that are involved in these transactions. Um, among other things, interchange is a $48 billion problem in the United States alone, and globally, about $7 trillion passes through credit and debit rails. So that $48 billion number that's spent on interchange is actually relatively low when you think about it as a global market. Inside of the United States, plastic cards are what is used instead of ACH. Does anybody know what ACH is? Awesome. ACH is the, the, basically the platform or the network that connects banks. Uh, ACH is kind of like MS-DOS. Like, it always works, but it's super lame, and it's super slow, and it's super old, but we all use it, and now we've built our new systems on top of ACH, which is completely ridiculous because ACH has huge, massive risks. So inside of these big risks, there's like this 120-day range that an ACH transaction can go bad. That's unbelievable. So inside of a trillion dollars in payments, there's $240 billion in risk. That seemed like a lot of money to anybody? OK, so that's a shitload of money. All right, they told me I could only swear once, so I'm in big trouble. So someone else has to pay for this risk, and that person is probably you. So ACH has like 80 reasons that it can fail. Most of them make absolutely no sense. Most people in banking actually don't fully understand them. The people that are insuring them don't fully understand them, and they don't know how to actually calculate them in real time. So we have to actually fix the underlying problem to fix payments. So really my question around payments and around risks and things like that is, what was the last thing that banks didn't fully understand that they were underwriting the risk of? Right? And so what's going to happen? I don't think it's going to get that bad, but I do think that there's room for improvement because that risk is there. So why don't we already use it as a, uh, already? So banks built on ACH, ACH transactions are super slow. Plastic transactions are super fast. You pull out your card to get what you want, which is really what transactions are all about. It's about me wanting my latte. It's about me wanting something, anything through the internet. My card's already in my pocket, so I use it. So when we bring in credit cards to fix the problem because we are so ridiculously impatient, all of a sudden we start bringing in those fees. And if you think about it fundamentally, cards are really just an access point to your money. I bet everybody in this room eventually uh, understands that when you spend money on a credit or a debit card, that money eventually comes out of your bank account. And again, I just become so consumed by the idea that we just keep building systems on top of the problem and charging people because of their impatience. You pay more for everything you buy because you are so damn impatient. Hopefully that's not counted as a swear word. So I can't say that one, that's for sure. So again, we're just repurposing all these fees and delivering them in different ways based on what has the least pain to the consumer. And we've almost like convinced consumers now not to pay attention to it because someone can invest because of how much they money they make on it, which is perfectly fine. They uh, created a solution to the problem, which was getting money moved really quickly, and they make a ton of money. So who has the incentive to fix the problem? I think people like me because we get really pissed off. Um, we realize how much money it is, and we think it's really fundamentally warped that all of a sudden people start looking at, well, I'm going to pay with this card because if I buy enough lattes, I'm going to get a big screen TV. I start associating the fact that my uh, irresponsibility with spending my own capital is going to get me cool stuff. Like, does that not seem totally warped to you? So I say, like, blow up the whole thing. Like, totally start over, right? Like, forget all of it. So until we do that, the system is never going to get better. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and we have to start over. So what is starting over? It means really looking at plastic cards as an accent point to money. And access point through APIs is really what the world's driven on anyway. All the hands that are currently inside of the equation can come right out, and we don't even need the old credit and debit switches anymore. So the way banks used to actually uh, transact money is not the way we normally do it anymore. So if you think about it, money doesn't move. It doesn't. We don't mail checks. What happens is the ownership of the money is what actually changes hands. And that's, it's just ones and zeros in computers, right? Anybody in this room think about com or like how much money they have is how much gold that is, or like how much it weighs? We think about how many zeros it is in our bank account. So a new system has to be cash, uh, based on cash, so without the debts that are created so you don't have to charge interest rates. It's got to be heavy on web services so that it can be essentially integrated into everything. So that's exactly what I spent the last three years of my life doing is building this thing called Dwala, and that's exactly what we do. We fix uh, basically ACH, and then we give it away to the world for free without all the cost of the interchange. Thank you.